And this is actually the third part of the equations menu, but for um, accounting purposes, let's say. We're going to call it part two. And it mostly deals with the solution of ordinary differential equations. And so we'll start by looking at the, the maxima file that we were looking at. Now, we dealing with ordinary differential equations. We're going to use this terminology for derivative. Diff of a function of x with respect to x to the second derivative. Diff y of x with respect to x for the first derivative. Y of x is our function and so on. Another example would be differential of xt with respect to t of 2. That's the function of time, for example for a second derivative of x with respect to t, diff xt with respect to t for dx and dt, x with t for x, etc. Here's an example. Yeah, a couple of examples. If I press shift enter, then the equations are shown in their full form, but this second derivative, first term in there, corresponds to this diff this and so on. To solve an, a differential equation, we proceed with equations solve or ODE. These solve up to second order differential equations, I believe. And so, for example, if I wanted to solve that particular one, diff x of t, move to the right, comma, t, move to the right, plus 2 times x of t, Move to the right equals sine of t. The function is not going to be y, it's going to be x of t, and the independent variable is t. That's basically what I have in this figure. If I press OK, then I get that input that I had before, and the solution is shown like this. Now, this percentage e is the exponential function, it shows up over here too. There's your sine cosine, and this is a constant of integration. And so that's how we, you can solve this first order differential equation. This is just a repetition of this command. If you run it again, you're going to get the same result, of course. If you write this by hand, you will, or typing it out in SMAS Studio, for example, the equation will look like this figure seven. Or if you multiply e to the minus 2t in, in, with these terms, the equation will be equivalent to this one. If the problem is accompanied with an initial condition, let's say x of 0 equal 1, that's called an initial value problem with one condition. We can call it IBP1. And we have an initial value problem here. But for that, we need to have the equation already solved. So let me show you this example. I have this ordinary differential equation that I'm going to store in a variable called sol1 for solution. And so let's say shift enter and we get that result. So that's stored into sol1. And then we're going to use a simplify substitute, which is something we learned in a previous video. Simplify substitute. And if we type sol1 x of t, change x of t to x, this will be the result. So I'm going to do shift enter. And instead of x of t, now we have x. Now I'm going to add this command that basically means the last result we're going to store into sol2, solution2. So that now is stored in solution2. Then I activate the initial value problem. Go into equations, initial value problem one, and type salt two here. And the point that I'm going to include here will be t equals zero, x equal one. That's my initial condition. And if I press OK, I get this result right here. So I'm going to cancel this. I get this result. And then I do Shift, Enter. 
and the, the initial condition has been replaced into this equation resulting in this form of the equation. Now, the equations menu here shows something called initial value problem 2, in which case we need two initial conditions. And that will correspond to a second order ordinary differential equation. So I'm defining this uh, ordinary differential equation, I'm going to call it ODE2. It's a second order equation, as, as I say, and then we're going to trigger initial value problem 2. And for, I'm sorry, no, no, sorry. We're going to solve the equation first. So we're going to solve ODE, and we just type the name here, ODE, under sign 2 because that got stored in in that variable and then change this to y of x and x and if we do that we get of course these results right here with this corresponding solution I'm going to repeat it right here this equation contains two constants percentage k1 and percentage k2 and also the exponential function and the sine function Let's store it into solve 3 by typing solve 3 colon percentage. That means store the last result into solve 3. And then we're going to change y of x to x. Substitute y of x equals y into solve 3. And store that into solve 4. And then we activate the initial problem 2. Initial value problem 2. The solution is solve 4, in uppercase, sorry. And then we have, um, for x equals 0, y equals 1, that's a point uh, um, value. And then we have this apostrophe differential of y with respect to x equals to, say, minus 1. That is going to produce this result right here. If I do OK. You can see it's that same result as before. I'm going to delete that one. And the values have been replaced, and my solution no longer contains the constants. It's just giving me that result. That's called an initial value problem because you provide condition at starting point at x equals 0, y equals 1, and dy and dx equals minus 1.